The recent reports of UFO sightings have brought about alien fever. Some say a disc-like object can be seen flying through the night sky before vanishing among the stars. Others have even reported that a green saucer flew over them with blinding lights before flying off before they can see where it went. Can these instances of close encounters truly mean that we are not alone? While the original 1984 Minibots came from Takara's MicroChange toy line, a new set of Minibots were made exclusively for the Transformers toy line in 1985. These new Autobots had vehicle modes that were very different than the strict cars and trucks of the previous year. From Power Glide's A10 Warthog to Sea Spray's Hovercraft mode, most of them were still based on real-life vehicles. Since they were probably designed initially for the MicroChange toy line before its cancellation, they are scaled with other Minibots despite their vehicles being much larger in real life. However, instead of transforming into a real life vehicle, the Minibot Cosmos transforms into a 1950s George Adamski style flying saucer. According to his tech spec as written by Bob Budiansky, Cosmos is the loneliest Autobot, as he acts as their communication satellite while in outer space. To relieve that boredom, he'll hover over a human's backyard at night to give them a little scare. His appearance in the original G1 cartoon certainly showed how lonely he could be. Ugh, give me some company out here! Voiced by Mike McConaughey, who has stated he was doing a bad impression of Peter Lorre. Movie theaters, shoes tours, and fast food restaurants. Cosmos was, for the most part, forced to hang out alone in space as he patrolled the stars. This also made him a target for Astro Train, who shot the small Autobot down onto Titan in the episode The God Gambit. Fortunately, one of the moon's natives was able to get a signal from him back to his fellow Autobots who came to his rescue. Right you are, there is something for you! Thanks to a little mass shifting, Cosmos was able to carry a small Autobot crew on space missions, with a few exceptions. I can take Bumblebee, Perceptor, and Sea Spray, but Optimus, you're just too big! Don't worry, Cosmos. You guys are on your own this time. Being a fan of Blaster's music, Cosmos was more than once sent on missions with the Autobots communications officer. We've got to do something. I'm trying. In the episode Quest for Survival, Spike and Bumblebee traveled to Floron 3 aboard Cosmos in order to can a substance that acts as a robotic insecticide. Robotic insecticide? Unfortunately, the local plant life, known as Morphobots, tried to eat them. They were able to get away, but some of their spores began to grow all over Cosmos. Spike and Bumblebee were able to escape, but Cosmos crashed on Earth as more Morphobots began to grow around him. Thanks to Blaster's music, I hope your speakers don't give out, Blaster! The Morphobots released their hold on Cosmos, Boy, am I glad to see you guys! as the Autobots came to his rescue. Thanks to his reconnaissance, Cosmos was able to find the missing Autobots that were kidnapped by Lord Chumley in the episode Prime Target. Thanks to his small size, he was able to uncover a Decepticon mining operation in space without being noticed in the episode The Secret of Omega Supreme. Unfortunately, his choice of vehicle mode meant that Cosmos was mostly restricted to space missions or orbiting the Earth for communications. Cosmos, head back up there and get me some solid information. Very well, Optimus Prime. He was also known for crashing quite a bit. In the episode Grimlock's New Brain, Skylinks and Cosmos were returning from a deep space mission when they were affected by anti-electrons that caused them to crash land on Cybertron. In the Marvel comics, Cosmos' vehicle mode was actually his standard Cybertronian vehicle mode. 
As part of Perceptor's resistance cell on Cybertron, he helped rescue Blaster from the smelting pool before the entire team was transported to Earth via a space bridge. However, the robot-hating Circuit Breaker captured the team and mounted their heads to her wall. She merged their bodies into a giant mech suit to battle against the Decepticon battle chargers, run amok and run about. However, their minds, once connected to the giant body, would only allow her to use them if she let them go, which she did after the battle chargers were defeated. Cosmos joined the rest of his Earthbound Autobots aboard the Ark, but he never took an Earth mode like his teammates. Unfortunately, Cosmos was just a character in the background as he helped in building equipment and repairing the Ark. He also sided with Blaster when the Autobots' communication officer battled Grimlock for leadership of the Autobots. While an underbase-powered Starscream destroyed most of the Transformers cast, Cosmos was among the survivors of his assault. However, he wasn't seen again until the sequel series, Regeneration 1, to help Optimus Prime save the Earth after Megatron had conquered it. In the end, Cosmos was disintegrated by Bludgeon's warship, the War World. In the IDW comics, Cosmos joined the Autobots on Earth when they forged an alliance with Skywatch. Most notably, he was sent into space to prevent the Autobots from being spotted in North Korea while they were fighting against the Combaticons by hacking some satellites. He also saved his teammates by rewiring a nuclear missile mid-flight and had it detonate into the ocean. While he did receive a larger upgraded body after joining the Lost Light crew, Cosmos' efforts throughout the comics went underappreciated by his fellow Autobots. Surprisingly, Cosmos eventually confided in Soundwave, who had set up a base in space as a new home for the Decepticons, known as Sanctuary Station. It was this alliance that led Soundwave to join up with Optimus Prime in attacking Galvatron's undersea base. During the battle, Galvatron used the energies within the Enigma of Combination to transform Cosmos, Slugslinger, Sunstreaker, Thundercracker, and Skylynx into Skyrain to attack Superion. Fortunately, Superion was able to take control of the Enigma and disabled it, which caused Skyrain to transform back into his component parts. To stop Galvatron, who was fleeing from the battle aboard Astro Train, Cosmos and RC pursued them in space until Galvatron fired upon Cosmos, which critically wounded the little Autobot. Buzzsaw and Laserbeak brought Cosmos back to Sanctuary Station, where he spent the next few months to recover from his injuries. Unfortunately, Bludgeon's Decepticon Vengeance Division had allied itself with Unicron and his warships attacked and destroyed Sanctuary Station, and Cosmos was among the casualties. Outside of G1, Cosmos has been noticeably absent thanks to different series trying to find use of his alternate mode of a UFO. In fact, in Japan, the character went by the name of Adams, which is probably taken from the flying saucer design made famous by George Adamski. Cosmos did make a brief cameo appearance in Transformers Animated, and he had a minor role in the Reign of Starscream prequel comics in the live-action film continuity. According to reports at a TFCon panel in 2015, Season 3 of Transformers Prime was planned to have Cosmos make an appearance by taking his alternate mode from a B-movie set. This was also an unused idea from the cancelled fourth season of Transformers Animated. His most notable use of his alternate mode came from a crossover comic with Mars Attacks. While the Autobots and Decepticons were able to fend off the alien attack, the Martians planned on unleashing their killing blow aboard their own flying saucers. Hiding in plain sight of them, Cosmos transformed and destroyed the Martian ships. Prowl mentions that he now sees a use for Cosmos in his flying saucer alternate mode. While Cosmos might be memorable for transforming into a flying saucer, you have to wonder, where did he get his alternate mode? In the G1 cartoon, Cosmos made his first appearance guiding an Autobot shuttle in the episode Megatron's Master Plan Part 2, with his navigation systems being guided by Teletran 1. Like other new characters in the show's second season, there was no real explanation given as to how he came to join the cast on the show. How do you do, Star 
Star Scream. Not very well, I hope. His absence in the episode, The Desertion of the Dinobots, suggests that he was unaffected by the breakdown of Cybertonium in his systems. Like Omega Supreme, Cosmos is capable of flying in space on his own. Most likely, the small and lonely Autobot chose his vehicle mode while on a space mission before rejoining Optimus Prime in Season 2. But because of his unearthly choice of alt mode, Cosmos' lot in life is to be stuck in space, usually all alone. Get back up there so you can track his return course to Earth. Again? But what do you think? Where did Cosmos get his choice of alternate mode? And should he come back with an update like a satellite or a space shuttle? Or should Cosmos keep his classic UFO mode? Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. I hope you've enjoyed this brief history on Cosmos. If so, please like and subscribe. I like to thank my patrons and channel members for your support. I have many more Transformers discussion videos like this coming soon, so stay tuned. And as always, until next time, till all are one. <laughs> Mission accomplished, Prime. Good work, Blaster. You've just gone platinum.